A classic and easy to transpose blues turnaround. A one, two, three, four, and... Let's break that down. Hello friends and welcome back to Swift Guitar Lessons for another mini lead guitar tutorial. One of the most crucial elements of the blues genre is the turnaround. This little segment at the end of a progression where a guitarist can throw in some ready-made licks and riffs that signal to the listener that the progression is about to repeat or the song is going to end. So in today's lesson, I'm gonna share with you a very cool classic turnaround that you can actually use in every single key. Now, before we jump in, I just wanna remind you, there's still a little bit of time to join my latest giveaway. You can head over to swiftguitar.com giveaways for the chance to win this fantastic Squire Classic Vibe Stratocaster. I'm just in love with this guitar. As I mentioned, I think it's just a beautiful instrument with the natural uh, body, the rosewood fretboard, this big beefy neck, which feels great in your hands. I'm even gonna throw in this new pick that I got from Openhagen. This is a cool pick that sticks right to the body of the guitar for easy access. So once again, swiftguitar.com slash giveaways. So good luck with the contest. Now, let's jump into our lesson. Okay, a close look at the fretboard, getting started breaking down this turnaround. We're gonna start off playing it in the key of C, but by the end of the lesson, you should be able to play it key to key. Uh, getting started, first a demonstration real slow, looks and sounds like this. <laughs> starts off with that nice climb. All right, so let's get that segment first. I'm picturing the C major chord played as an A shape and also as a G shape. That gives me most of the notes that I need to create this turnaround. But I'm also picturing the major pentatonic scales that surround those chord shapes. can also be resolved here on the third fret of the A string. Now I'm also using some more colorful notes, which you could say come from the Mixolydian scale in that same position. Okay, right there, that's all the ingredients I need to create this turnaround, starting with the walk up. Okay, so that was the A string third fret. Then five sliding up to seven. Then fifth fret D. Then reaching for the dominant seven. Eighth fret of the D string, a B flat note. So far you have. All right, then some ascendant harmonies. All right, so that was seven, five, six. On the D string, G string, and B string. Then six, five, seven, and then five, five, eight, which we're going to play all at once using hybrid picking. So far, you have. That's a great place to stop and practice. Then we're gonna go to the five chord, which in the key of C would be G or G dominant seven. We're gonna play. Transitioning from the G seven chord to a G seven sharp five. Okay, which is basically an augmented chord, but it has the dominant seven in it. Okay, so that little riff one more time. to set up the resolve back to C, in this case, C9. Okay, so I have a G dominant seven bar chord, bar in the third fret, E to E. I've got the fifth fret of the A string, and I'm hammering my middle finger on to the fourth fret of the G string after I hit the root. 
Next, we're going to the high E string. Notice that hybrid picking. Then back to the root. Next, take your pinky, add it to the sixth fret of the B string, and give it a little strum down, uh, so that way you can imply the dominant seven tonality. Okay, once more, back to the root. And then a strum of this dominant seven sharp five. Okay, so I have the index finger still barring. And from that, I'm able to strum the D string third fret, uh, G string and B string fourth frets, and then the third fret of the high E string. That's a great cliffhanger chord. It's full of tension. Okay, so, so far you have over the G. A C9 chord shape closes up shop. Frets three, two, three, three, three. A C9 chord shape. And so far, everything you have in this uh, turnaround is transposable because there's no open strings. So you're gonna be able to just move it fret to fret depending upon what key you're in. Okay, so once more, the transition from G to C, the five chord going back to the one chord for the resolve. A nice little arpeggio sounds great to close up. You put those two elements together and we have... shop a little bit further with a nice little major pentatonic lick. This is something similar to what I learned from a great guitar player named Kirk Fletcher. Okay, once more. All right, I love that lick using the major pentatonic scale or that mixolydian scale in G position. We're starting off five, going up to seven, then sliding up to eight, back. All right, next, the eighth fret of the A string. A nice country roll, minor third to major third. All right, all that was in the same box. And then resolve into the 10th fret of the D string and a dominant seven add 13 chord. Frets eight, eight, nine, and 10. Another movable shape. Okay, you put that together and we have. You can also throw in a slide. for a nice little jazz flavor to your end in there. Okay, put all that together and we have. Okay, very good everybody. Now, the last step for your progress today is to see if you can transpose this lick to a different key. One of the things I like to do is just practice playing it a whole step up and a whole step back, just for starters. So if I take the whole operation, move it up a full step, now I'm in the key of D. I'm picturing the G shape of the D chord. Resolving on a D note, 12th fret D string. And playing the D dominant seven at 13 chord. Let's see if we can play it in the key of B flat now, first fret. It's definitely a stretch. So fun moving this from key to key. Okay, so practice nice and slow. It's gonna take you some time to get the spacing right as you move from key to key.